Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started with the Commissioner's work session of August 24th. The meeting is being recorded. Anything said in the meeting will become part of the public record. There's no public hearing today. Um, is there anything that you want to update on the CARES Act? Uh, no, just wanted to uh, let you guys know we have, we've had four um, web, web conferences, we'll probably schedule another one by the end of the week. Um, we probably had something like, let's say a total of maybe 30 people attend over the course of those and uh, had a lot of good questions. There were a lot of people that were on the fence about even getting involved and after they did the web conference they were, they applied because they, I think that there's a lot of concern that this that they wouldn't be eligible, but when they kind of saw how things were run, I think they were supportive of it. We've had, I believe, over 20 applications already. Um, the, the the total estimated loss in those applications is uh, over 900,000. So we're we're expecting that by the end of the week, especially with the deadline being Friday, that we'll definitely go over the million dollar mark for. Uh, Expenses and, and uh, losses. So um, I think that I, I don't. I would say that I'm glad that we're going to be able to help people through this program. I, I can't say that I'm glad that that's true, in the sense that it's it's unfortunate that they're in that position. But uh, um, it's it, I'm glad that, that through this program the county's going to be able to help help these folks. So. I think Jim Decker and the WCCBI have done a really good job and were instrumental in uh, working with the businesses um, in you know, any situations where there was uncertainty uh, about the process. Uh, Jim would reach out to myself and Jeff and uh, we would get some additional insight if necessary from ZNA. And there's some good questions posed mm -hmm. uh, about eligibility and um, types of businesses or types of losses. So uh, I think things are working the way we expected them to, which uh, yeah. we will always want to position ourselves for success. So, so far, so good. Um, a couple of things that we're going to have to, one thing that we're going to have to make a determination on is due to the number of folks that are applying and due to the nature of the applications, we may want to talk about changing the parameters for this phase in the sense that um, some of the portion of the applications we're getting already are from organizations that are 501c3s, but they have no employees. Like so, for instance, like an organization has a fundraiser once a year they pull in $20,000. That's their fundraiser they're applying, uh, but they have no employee base. Um, the, the question is going to be, do we want to take away from the organizations that have employees, that have a footprint, that have fixed, um, costs. fixed costs, and and give to them if the if the amount is greater than the uh, than the than what we have? And I think that the, the suggestion was brought up to uh, basically mandate that you have to have at least one employee in order to qualify for the program. And, and I think that the way I would frame it is is that if, if in the grant window we go over the total, like the total approved losses are greater than the grant window, that we basically then at that point state that you have to have one employee in order to qualify. And, and then that way, um, you know, it, it, I mean, obviously we want to, you know, I would love to give them money, you know, but I, I, it's kind of one of those situations where I have organizations that could fold, you know, right. like, and then like, for instance, I'm a member of the Lions Club. I didn't put in an application, but, you know, we raise, you know, eight or $10,000 a year doing different stuff that we're not going to be able to do. I, I, but we're not going to fold this year because we didn't get to raise that money, you know. Whereas there's other organizations where they're literally holding on by a thread, and I think there's a case to be made that they should be get first, first opportunity. I'm not sure the employee thing is exactly the right breakdown, though. I mean, take for instance a federal C three fire department; they don't have any employees, but well, I mean, you we, 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 could, we, could, we could set it up. However, I'm just yeah, saying. I, mean, I think we probably could we maybe quantify that first 
mm -hmm. you know, what that dollar amount is for those entities that are fundraising entities that, you know, aren't at risk. Um, Probably goes back to their fundamental purpose, right? I mean, well, yeah, if, if you're a 501c3 raising money for other 501c3s or something. Then. Right. Well, I think, I think that's kind of my point is, is I guess there's going to be some variables there that we can right. mull over and just yep. let everybody know that that's a possibility. Yep. Okay. Because I think those are all good points, so I totally agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that cares? Um, I, I just want to say, too, that um, Haynes and Company and Percy and Associates has been exceptionally good to work with, and I think it's a great fit for the program. I'm really glad that they're on board with this. And, uh, they bring a really good uh, perspective on it and have had a ton of a lot of really good suggestions. So, And we may look to them for some insight on what we were talking about just a little bit ago. Well, they, they, they're continuing to kind of ask questions and basically their position is they're going to, I mean, obviously there's going to be like an ongoing dialogue about this, but they're going to take that into their report, you know, as far as like how they kind of see, because each, it, it's becoming apparent that each case can be, there's a lot of variables there. Right. Um, real quick on broad bands, um, I'm making some headway. Uh, I've actually now got a map that's quasi public <laughs> of some various vertical assets that would allow us to um, potentially partner with an internet service provider that would uh, be able to provide internet to places within a couple miles of each of those towers. So talking with Mobilecom, uh, Eric Hawkins specifically, and he thought was going to send me a proposal by this meeting so that we could look over it, but he did not get it yet. Uh, but he did send that, which is So that map from, yeah, that came from Mobilecom then? Yes. What is Mobilecom? Uh, you know Ramco? Yeah. They're kind of like Ramco's competitor to our south. Okay. Um, and they are working with Forest County right now to do a similar program in Forest County, so the semi connected with them. But the Northwest Commission facilitated. Mm -hmm. facilitated. So what would their proposal be then? The proposal would be apparently they are actually interested in getting in the market of becoming an internet service provider. Okay. Um, so we would need to help facilitate getting a hold of the vertical assets mm -hmm. um, and potentially piggybacking licenses so that the 911 center can use them in the future for dispatch. But then they would be the ones that would you know, you know, pay. They would, they would own the equipment and everything and maintain it. They would be the service provider, so, mm -hmm. um, which is great for me. I, mean, I don't want, particularly want the county government to be an internet provider. <laughs> but if we had vertical assets that we were leasing to a private company, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm still working on the strategy, but we're making progress. Well, I think we've talked about the fact that maybe it isn't one size fits all, right? That we might have to look at various and sundry different options based on the area. So, I mean, the more that we can ideas come to us that we can brainstorm, you know, it may not be one size fits all, but it still may be able to become a comprehensive plan. Yeah, um, but this won't be, I mean, this will be in partnership with the existing providers, with Cancel TV, Volcom, I mean, there could be many different providers that help, because as you can see, like half the geography of the county and the red hash are underserved. Mm -hmm. There's no one provider that's going to step in and solve that. Correct. No silver bullet. So, okay, I think that's it. Fairs, um, new items of discussion. Uh, League of Women Voters contacted us asking if we would participate in a, um, a kind of town hall forum, specifically on COVID nineteen, and we had a date in November. I just wanted to gauge: um, should I do that on my own, or do you guys want to do that together? I think that if we were folks going to be the commissioner's office, it should be all of us. Okay. That's fine. And then we'll just work with. We'll have to do some questions that got asked that we'll need to reach out to others to answer. Yeah, great. So we that will be. We can work such to pull data yeah. for us. Yeah. As it relies on the, you know, the economics and the economy. So. Okay.
Hey, that we you got Jim Decker's side and yeah. yeah. We were I think we really do need to do it together because I can I don't even know that stuff as well as you guys since you're working on the business side. Okay, and then in slightly Anna and I went through uh, I don't know how many we looked at, probably grand total of fifty different uh, contact relationship management systems, narrowed it down I think in the ballpark of six or seven that we actually sort of priced out and we did a few uh, webinars and really narrowed it down to Insightly, which is really pretty common contact relationship management system. Um, the importance or reason that it's really come to the forefront is that during COVID-19, we were getting calls at the courthouse at public safety at 911, at the hotline number, at Love Bank, at WCCBI, et cetera, and there was no one place to kind of put all the contact information and the, the case that's coming out of it in order to follow through. Um, so what we'd like to do, or what we're proposing, I suppose, is that uh, some CARES Act money could go into uh, getting slightly set up so that we would have a system to take calls like that. Uh, it could also play into other offices too. So um, I don't know what kind of system your offices use, for instance, but if someone called in with a question, um, you know, conceivably, Ham could take a note, for instance, um, you know, the person with why, with phone number, you know, fill in the blank, email, uh, is trying to contact selections about some question, whatever, types in the information, assigns it to you, um, and then there's just an automatic trail, like it'll email you, but it also let her know that you received it and when you answer it and that sort of thing. Um, we particularly have that in the commissioner's office and it seems like every other day we get a call that kind of gets sent out to all three and then we don't know who ended up calling and <laughs> we're not really all in the office together at the same time. We need to verify you know, that someone else called. But the this time that I almost feel like we should have one number and then all call. I actually agree with that. <laughs> because it just <laughs> It gets it gets crazy because uh, um, yeah. you know people yeah. call each one to see who they can talk to. Right. We'll have two different conversations. Then like everybody's trying to figure out who responded first. Right. And then you know I mean it just gets. Well, right. I mean, is that more of a is is that more of an organization and a change of process than it is meaning can Tam pick up our lines and. Is, is that something no can can we can have it set up but right now I cannot pick up your line is that something that you've done in the past okay well if I can we can talk I mean we can sort that out with IT later sure, yeah, but sure. well I just I guess my point is if we are able to utilize if we have a is it a process that we can improve or do we need another product okay so there is a process problem right that is separate there are many different process problems that could be solved by one solution. So, very narrowly thinking about the commissioner's office sure. in the future, that's not really the motivation for this. This has more to do with dealing with WCCBI, Love Bank, EMA, 911, commissioner's office, everybody. Like, you can't just fix that by running all the phone lines through PAM or something. That's why I'm saying you need a solution. This is a relatively affordable one. one I think one of the things that I get concerned about, and it would be great to tie that into it, is um, whether it's complaint or yeah, you know, yeah. different. There are so many different complaints. Correspondence and different, different correspondence that we don't really track, and so there's no way to verify like what what was happening. Yeah, all of that could be tracked in this. The other thing is, I know we don't want to have yet another platform they have to go log into separately. This integrates with your Outlook. And you can put it on your phone as a app. So does that have a? Is it, it's a subscription service, right? Yep. So what's the what's the terms? I mean, we could draw it if it doesn't work out. Right. It's monthly past the. Uh, what's your term? We're doing bill annually. So another oh, thousand. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. One thousand seven hundred sixty dollars so without the discount. Ten thousand. Yeah, and I'm not asking for a decision today or anything. Um, certainly something that uh, so so when it says 20 users does that mean 20 individuals 
Yes. Okay. And is like WCCBI. Individual accounts. So if like WCCBI was one, then all three people over there logged in as one. That'd be fine. Again, we don't need to get into the details of it. It's sure. Just, no, I, I just was letting you know yeah. that that was kind of the solution to potential. Got it. A solution to multiple problems that we've been having. Um, I don't know where it falls in terms of the ranking of priorities. So you can talk about this one time. Sure. Is there a uh, is there a contract for you? Not yet. Okay. <clears throat> Policy and procedures. Um, I met with HR last week. Yeah, last week, and we uh, figured out all the procedures and instructions and forms that were needed for human resources. So we have that template we all figured out. Um, projects. Any projects you want to bring up? Well, in hand in hand with that, you know, we looked at the table of contents of the employee handbook that we're updating and. Added some more modern policies and procedures. We're going to probably need to talk about social media and those types of things as well. So, um, and I know that we received some policies and procedures from you, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> do you feel like you've got that pretty well handled now, or do you feel like there's? Oh, that's just a drop in the bucket. Okay. That's what I was afraid of. Yeah, that's just a drop in the bucket. So, so we're going to be working this week with Lisa on a, on a number of things. Um, the, the work instructions and stuff, I think, is something that's going to be an ongoing thing, but the, the, the core is going to be to review um, the, the book related to the, the poll workers, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, all the information related to that to make sure that we can kind of summarize that. Um, and then that'll probably get transitioned into the work instructions and stuff like that. It's something that we have ready to start doing the trainings, like how everything went. The other thing is, is uh, today and tomorrow, I'll be working with Lisa in order to put like a proposal together. I want to do it last week, there's just too much going on, um, related to assistance for her and, and the process at the end for, um, you know, pre-canvassing, like, have, like having people here to do all of that. Um, and, and then the assistance through the related election so that she has enough hands to, and we can get those people lined up within the next month. So the goal is going to be to have something, um, because we have an election board meeting. Did we, did we do that? Did we schedule that for, for prior to the commissioner's meeting? We did, did we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have to set up like a, we'll have to set up an election board meeting then, which is fine. Um, but all, so that we can get that proposal to you guys to have, to have the ability to review it, and then we'll set up an election board meeting. Maybe you want it for Wednesday? Well, yeah, but we'd have to advertise it, like, so... Uh, Otherwise, it would be the first one in September. Yeah, I, I think that, I think we can talk about it off, after this, about when that'll be, and then we'll make sure that we advertise it properly. Because right. the, the thing is, is we don't, I don't know if we want to wait till the next commissioner's meeting. <laughs> I think that we want to get it done now so that we can get everything lined up. I would agree. I would agree. And uh, if the commissioner is alive, there's been a recent development to, I think, today on the Trump suit. I don't know if it's if the news or not. But it was all dropped. It's been... Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, Judge Nicholas Rangin of uh, the Western District Court has entered an order staying the Trump suit, basically putting it on a pause, wow. pending the outcome of the case over in uh, Pennsylvania uh, Superior Court. Oh. So he's sort of allowed, he's uh, entered an opinion, I haven't even read right the opinion, it's just me, I downloaded about 10 minutes before I got here. But the order stays the case, basically the president on pause, nothing, nothing will be done when he says that if the uh, Pennsylvania courts do not uh, take action to a rule on the, the essential matters of the case by October 5th and, uh, and either party can move um, to remove the stay and get judicial relief from the federal court. Um, so that, uh, 
effectively, the federal litigation is on pause right now. And there were many um, notices of depositions of, that were being issued. Um, and now, in the Commonwealth Court case, there's actually been a petition to actually have the, uh, the case reviewed by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So that, that matter is moving quickly. So I, I, would, I would expect that, this is just a prediction, I would expect that to be granted, I and I would expect the Supreme Court to issue some moments before October 5th. I'm sure. I believe mail-in ballots would be due, I mean, could, could begin to arrive. Before, you know, right Mid-September is when they start right. going out. So, I mean, to me... Mid-September? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my thinking about it is, is that the judge um, has, like, keeping the back door, I'm not sure how helpful it is, because you're already going to see back door stuff. He could have just let it go to the, to the Pennsylvania courts. Yeah, but, that seems a lot like a bit of a hold. Well, it has to do with... Uh, uh, with the Pullman Doctrine, and essentially you have a state, you know, this state court action that uh, could could handle everything, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, federal court is not interested in ruling on issues that are purely matters of state mm -hmm. election law. Yeah. So, if someone, if we get to October fifth, the Pennsylvania courts haven't ruled. A party could file a motion to lift the stay, but they could only go back into court on a set, what, any matter that's not purely a state law issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we'll just do the best we can. That's yeah, right. just hang tight and do our best. That's yeah. right. Okay, make sure you cover all our bases. Any other projects? The other thing is, is I need to talk to you after this about the farm policy. Please. Sure. Um, just because I've got to get that ironed out before. before uh, I get That's fine. That would that, be, that be appropriate for executive session if you want to. So. Okay. Okay. All oh, those things are just in bed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's there's just yeah. I mean, honestly, we're we're at the finish line. So. Okay. Good. Upcoming commissioners meeting. We'll see that we will have a public hearing on CDEG.
we'll have to figure out what to work on form. But in general, uh, what we are trying to accomplish is understanding the projects that are backlogged in progress or complete. Uh, so many projects kind of come to us for a vote on something, and then we don't know where it's at, or we don't know if they're in the pipeline, and then just kind of get sprung with uh, projects. Uh, we want to understand if there's any staffing uh, needs or requirements. Um, we'd like to look at some statistics, nothing too burdensome, but uh, you know, by way of example, uh, monthly, if you'd like to know how many bids or how many properties are in the repository bid, or how many people got registered to vote in the last 30 days, or something like that. So we'll eat, you know, come up with like three, five, six stats or something for each department um, that would be helpful in understanding, uh, and then constituent complaints if there are any, and or resource needs. So that's what we're uh, generally asking for. I don't think it will be too burdensome. It should probably only take once we get it worked out, you know, 15 minutes to fill out once a month. Uh, but then we have kind of a more consistent rhythm. Um, so really the reason we want to do it is partly because of public accountability. Uh, so that there's, like once a month, we're in the rhythm of letting the public know what the offices do. Um, we want to get in a rhythm that will inform the commissioners of any important topics. We want it to be a structured way to report rather than kind of the informal conversations that we might have so that there's a way to kind of document it. And um, probably most of Especially, we want an appropriate way to record and retain the information uh, so that the Connect Right to Know Records Officer kind of has it permanently. That really applies to some of the committee meetings that happen that aren't part of, um, currently part of public records, so like the department head meetings. Um, you know, as there are minutes taken, I suppose they're emailed around, so we could always get them through searching the email, but like if that was going to be right to know, we'd probably have to like go find the secretary that year and search their computer and try to find their files. Whereas if it was reported to the commissioner's office monthly, then or however often they meet, then it would be part of the consent agenda. Um, it wouldn't need to be something that's explained every month, uh, much like uh, the city can just end up in our consent packet. If any of the commissioners had questions or wanted to talk about it, you could. But um, otherwise, it would just be kind of a routine thing that's put in the packet every month. We would take you know, a couple minutes to look over it before the meeting, uh, bring up any questions if needed. Otherwise, just pass it as part of the consent agenda and wouldn't even necessarily bring it up, unless there's a reason to. Uh, again, we moved at the beginning of the year to having uh, each commissioner uh, liaise with various departments. So if you have, uh, projects coming up, mm -hmm. it's a good idea to kind of raise it with that person and make sure that they're aware because they're kind of the gatekeeper um, you know, the other commissioners and then that way we don't step on any sunshine issues. So if any departments want to meet with the commissioners, so to speak, uh, it's more appropriate to meet with one your one commissioner and then um, if there's a need to bring it to the work session or a commissioner's meeting or something, then you kind of get that person advocating for you on behalf uh, of your department amongst the board. Um, so it's, we don't have any sunshine issues, but also you've got somebody in your corner that's kind of helping shepherd your project through. Any questions? I just have a couple comments. So the first thing is, is um, I think that's a good idea. I mean, obviously it's something that maybe we've been kicking around for a while, so definitely support of it. Uh, one is that I think that, I think, I. I'm assuming that if you ask um, Lisa and Phil, I'm not putting you on the spot. My assumption is, is it's going to take more than 15 minutes to put the report together every month, especially if you're going to include complaints. And I just want to state that I'm perfectly fine with that, that it's going to take some time to put these together. Um, and, I, and I would prefer that they be, like, that the complaints be written into it. So if someone lodges a complaint or is complaining to you about, like, the service or whatever, that be included. I don't think anybody should be scared of that. I don't think it should be something where everybody is afraid of how they're going to look or whatever. And the big reason that I say this is that there are other counties and other municipalities that do this in order to keep a record of it. Because it, there, there have been multiple times where we've had an issue where there's been a complaint, 
or somebody says that they called three times and I talked to this person every time and they told me this and we have no ability to litigate that or have a, a, an opposing view of it because we have no record of the correspondence or the discussion. And so I think, I think that's got to be a piece of it. I, and, and, and the idea of the report, again, is just, too, we, we don't, we, it's really difficult to track historic data in this place because it's really based on who's in a position at any given time. So, it, it, you know, it's really impossible for us to know five years ago what we were doing in a particular department. You know, the director changes and all of the institutional knowledge is taken with them. So, I definitely support it. I would just be, like, I think that for the directors, when they hear about this or there's a conversation about this, there's going to be a lot of concern about, well, what does this mean for me? Or what if I, am I going to look bad? Or what? And I think that it's important to understand that the commissioners support everybody in their position. It's not there to be hypercritical of them. Um, it's more of there's just all these different things that we need to do and see in order to make decisions. And, and I think that that, that that reporting function has to be some part of it at some point. You know, the other part, the, the only other thing I would add is, is that the problem with the liaison bit, or the one problem is, is like, for instance, you, like a, a director ends up talking to one commissioner, and I'm, and I'm just as bad at this as, as anybody. If I forget to tell you guys the conversation we had, then, you know, and then it's not their fault. <laughs> you know, they thought they were talking to the commissioner's office. Like, but if they put a report in saying, like, like the assessment department's a good example. Like, you know, they put a report in saying, um, we started doing preliminary work on, on putting the tax bills out. This is how far we got. We expect to have them out, you know, the second week of September or whatever, whatever the date is. Um, you guys get that report. Then if somebody, say me, forgets to tell you that that's happening, uh, then the director has provided all the information and they've done everything they can to know about Exactly. Okay. Okay. Instead of complaints, can just be correspondence instead? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I, 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 yes, absolutely. Like, I don't want to kind of create a system that just facilitates more complaints. You know, I'm not trying to say that. I, correspondence is a good word. I just say complaints because that's the thing where everybody is always terrified of how they're going to look. Like, they think that if they get a complaint, that means they've done a bad job. And, and that's not... There is no way to do these jobs without getting complaints. I don't, I don't care. I, I, I don't know what you would do. If, if, if I had a department that didn't have a complaint, I'd be concerned about that department. I mean, seriously. Well, like, like they, they have to be doing, they're, they, they're either covering something up or they're, you know. Or they're not doing anything. Yeah, they're not doing anything. Or they're not reporting anything. And so, uh, like, I, that's the thing that I would stress because I'm sure that when people hear about doing a report or, or sending information or a record of anything, there's this fear that they're going to look bad and, you know. Well, I, I mean, I take it the opposite way, honestly. I think this is an opportunity for them to share with how, they were, how they can shine, you know? Some oh, yeah. special yeah. things that well, you've done, I, I, you know, I, particularly I, with you right now, right? I mean, you're in the throes of all kinds of things <laughs> yeah. and to be able to share with us the accomplishments that you put forth during the, the month um, is something that you can be proud of sharing. Absolutely. I mean, that's a big piece of it. Good suggestion. Than... I changed it to correspondence because it's cool. actually that. I mean, you can put in attaboys that you got. So we definitely get some of those. You can yes. put complaints in there. You can put important letters from the Department of State or right. changes in the law or potential sure. legislation or something that could impact you. Stuff like that. Perfect. Great. Sounds great. Okay. And I, 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 and again, I totally agree with you guys about the positive end of it. Like, you know, and I, and I think that stressing that's a good thing. I'm just, again, just stating what the director, how the directors are going to see it. They're going to see it as more work, and they're going to look at it like, okay, well, what if somebody calls and yells at me, and then I have to write it in? That's those are the two things that everybody's going to think about. And even if you say, no, this is positive. It's really positive. And that's why I'm just saying, just to stress that it's not something that you need to be scared of. I'm sure my correspondence will be very long here next month, so. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing is, it's like, we get calls and we get complaints and stuff, like, Phil's entire life is a complaint. <laughs> you know, like, and, uh, it's no. a 40-hour a week complaint. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I'm not going to joke, but like, Bill's job is literally spending every day on the phone with people who are, who who are not happy with what's going on. Right. So, 
I can just picture him and sitting over there going, when he leaves here, going, now they want me to report on all the people that are complaining <laughs> to me or whatever, you know. Or, you know. Well, yeah, and there's, there's some offices that would use that more than others, right? I mean, honestly, yours are kind of routine, so I don't want like, a list of every single person. Yeah, there's, there's, different there's different letters that are mailed in, so I, Yeah, I mean, yeah. same thing, but, you know, if there was, I don't know, a complaint that for your office that, you know, there's a voting precinct that doesn't have an ADA compliant, like, whatever, something like that. That's more like the complaint yeah. I'm looking for, not the routine thing. More like things that we should try to fix. Okay. In your situation, like 90% of your complaints no. we're not going to fix. They yeah. are what they are. But like you, an actionable item. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I'm not looking at complaints for complaints' sake. Like, 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 a good, like a good example, and I'm, I'll use another department, it's like the assessment department. When someone calls and um, they, they, they're not happy that someone came onto the property to measure the addition that they put on. And they think that there should be you know, a notice and that it's illegal that the people are on the property and they're going to sue the county. You know, or something, you know, or there's some kind of like. Well, you think it's to that point that it becomes redacted, <laughs> probably. Well, no, there's but I mean, that, that, like, like, if we never, like, there, there are complaints, like, and things, and, and, and I, like, let's put it this way there have been times where stuff like that has happened, where there's been, like, a serious situation, and we, it's not forwarded to us. It's, and and that, that kind of stuff needs to be documented yeah. so that. In Elimination of getting blindsided. Exactly. Well, blindsided, and then there's times where it isn't addressed immediately, you know, right. and, and, and uh, so that's kind of what I get. That's where I guess I agree with. Well, I think, yeah, I think as you, we draft what these uh, reports look like, that we right. can review them against the Right to Know Act and yeah. say this is what we would expect to receive in the report. And this oh, is yeah. like if we had to redact, this is the kind of content we would yeah. expect. And define what a reportable item would be, you know, so that, that everybody isn't, like in Phil's case, you know, writing every single complaint that they get, but the, the ones where, you know, because you have them every once in a while where there's a there's some ambiguity in the law or you feel like there's, you know, something that can be Yeah, there'd be lengthy letters and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what you want to know. Yeah. That's good. All right. Uh, schedule wise, note the Farm Bureau. Picnic is on Wednesday, and I am not going to be in at all on Friday. I'm taking a off day for work on the honeydew list. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? We'll be in and out all week. Okay. Um. Any calls for executive session? The farm calling. The call oh, you just want to do that. You're yeah, I don't particularly want to be part of that. No, that's good. <laughs> so, no, it's really that session. You just handle it. Hot day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say that we could just go over it and then, okay. and then just draft an agreement. And then we have an agreement draft. There were the, the, the there were a couple of items in it that just needed to be done right now. Okay. Sounds good. So nothing more. We're adjourned.